In this lesson, we'll do a couple more problems where we are asked to simplify and also where the distributive property is involved. So in this example here, notice that we have these parentheses and something outside the parentheses that might indicate the distributive property would be appropriate. But there's not a number out here, it's just a negative symbol. Um, so one trick that's gonna help you in this class and in many classes to come is to understand that this negative out here really means negative one. So you can change it to negative one times 3a plus 2b minus 14. Okay, and the reason this works is because understand that you know the number negative 3 for example can be formed by taking negative 1 times 3 okay so having a negative in front of something is the same as saying negative 1 times that something okay so that negative is really negative 1 and then I can distribute the negative 1 through as the distributive property tells me I can and so what I have here is negative 1 times 3a is negative 3a. Negative 1 times 2b is negative 2b. And then this minus sign drops down. Negative 1 times 14 is negative 14. Now negative 3a and then I can go ahead and turn plus negative 2b into minus 2b and then minus negative 14 into plus 14. Now, this middle step right here, I would say is not necessary. Um, because what you can do if you'd like is now that you're hopefully more comfortable with negative signs and minus signs and things like that, um, what you can do is think of negative signs and minus signs almost interchangeably. Okay, so we could get directly to this answer by saying negative 1 times 3a is negative 3a. Negative 1 times positive 2b is a negative 2b. And a negative 1 times a, and I realize that's a minus sign, but think of it like a negative. Negative 1 times negative 14 is a positive 14, and because it's positive 14, I'll put a plus. So if you're comfortable making uh, that shortcut, I'm completely fine with that. If that's um, a little tricky for you, then just keep the plus and minus symbols there and only multiply negative one by exactly what you see here and here. And then of course simplify, uh, you know, C minus a negative, turn it to plus, C plus a negative, turn it to minus. Okay, now let's do uh, one more example. We're asked to do lots of, uh, lots of different simplification techniques that we've learned in this section. So first of all, I can see that the distributive property may hold here. And notice there's a 0 0.9 in here and there's a 3.2. I'd like to put those together somehow, right? Uh, but uh, right now the 0 0.9 is trapped inside parentheses. So there's no way you can put 3.2 with 0 0.9 until you've untrapped it by using the distributive property. So we'll distribute negative 0 0.3 through to all three of these terms. And let me show you the shortcut method that I described up here. Negative 0 0.3 times 5x should give me negative 1.3. 5x. Negative 0 0.3 times negative 0.4y should give me plus 0.12y. Negative 0 0.3 times positive 0 0.9 is going to be a negative 0 0.27. So you notice how I use the minus and negative basically interchangeably in my thinking to get to this. Um, and again, if this isn't comfortable for you, just go ahead and use the technique I did here and show this middle step. All right, now we still have plus 1.5x and plus 3.2. 
I notice I have a negative 1.5x and a plus 1.5x, so I have additive inverses. So let's put those together. Remember the commutative property allows me to alter the order of the terms. So I'll add negative 1.5x plus 1.5x. I'm going to keep the 0.12y exactly where it is. And then I'll have negative 0.27 plus 3.2. Okay. Whenever there's lots of terms like this and you reorder, you know, to make a double check to make sure you have all of the terms from the previous step in the second step, and, and we do. So remember, these are additive inverses, so what do they make? They make zero. And then here we can, of course, just combine these using subtraction. So 3.2 minus 0 0.27 is equivalent to negative 2.7, or sorry, negative 0.27 plus 3.2. We had a zero there. I have to do some borrowing though. So we end up with plus 2.93. So, of course, we can drop this zero out because it's just the additive identity. So our answer is 0.12y plus 2.93. Sorry, that decimal point got away from me there. There we go. That looks better.